a question or something. Might, maybe. Talk to them. Talk to them. Nah, sure. I'm good. Whenever. All right. Welcome. Um, Jared Ambo here from the Ambo Law Firm. And we are talking to Anthony Template today from I Just Killed My Dad. Um, the last time we had sat down and had a conversation, well, the sound was pretty doggone bad, so it was difficult to hear us. But uh, we also, it was a while ago, it was right after the documentary had come out. And Anthony and I had sat down and talked about just where he was in life and what was going on, and I thought that an update would be really great. Uh, I know that people are very curious. People are still watching the show. I still get a, a, a text message on Instagram every other day, uh, still going pretty strong, and so uh, my thought was to get Anthony in the office and sit down with him and just say, where you at, Anthony? Um, you know, where, where you at in your life? You know, We'll talk a little bit about the legal process, a little bit about probation, a little bit about what that looks like. Anthony's been a model citizen on probation thus far. The judge has been very happy with him. Uh, but we'll talk about all that, talk about his education, and uh, maybe answer a few questions uh, from the audience. But welcome, uh, and uh, give you Anthony Tumpley. Yeah, yeah, thank you all for having me. But uh, I, don't, I don't be on Instagram and stuff a lot, so it probably was, I thought it would be probably uh, necessary to actually just come and talk in person. It would be a lot easier. And that way people can see you, you can talk to them, you can you know, look into the dog on camera and say hello, you know, just kind of tell yeah, people yeah. what's up. This is the first time I've ever actually done anything like in real life live of course i play games and stuff live but i don't i don't i don't do podcasts and stuff like this so. <laughs> and we're going out live and that's kind of nervous you a little bit nervous about it i'm always nervous that's nothing new it's it, i can handle it <laughs> <laughs> you kind of feel nervous in general yeah yeah that's cool i just look, got bad nerves that's chill though i mean everybody look you ain't got bad nerves everybody feels that way i know i mean i do this for a living and before we were getting ready to start the podcast i get a little butterflies in my stomach it's normal man i tell people all the time if, if you don't feel a little bit of that then you're yeah, not really your taking emotions it, are messed up yeah and you're not taking it seriously right mm -hmm. like like you got to take things seriously and you know this is we sort of getting on here and telling people how you're doing on your life. That's serious business, right? I mean, it's fun yeah, yeah. too, but it's, you know, it's your life, man. It's yeah, serious it's fun business. It's to talk about, but it's no laughing matter. That's yeah. right. So we, so, you know, having the nerves thing is pretty normal, man. You know. Mm -hmm. So what has been going on, man? If I ask you that question, what's been happening? What's the answer? Not a whole lot. Still alive. I lost, I had bought a car, lost that, bought another car. So now I'm good now, but um, been working on my education and stuff. Had a job, quit that. Let's be clear why you lost that first car. You got in an accident. I got in an accident. I wasn't at fault. For and it was me. not your fault. It was not N O T not <laughs> not my fault. Anthony's fault. I know how to drive, people. I swear to God, I know how to drive. <laughs> these 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 people in Baton Rouge sometimes don't. Okay, it's crazy. And in fact, uh, our law firm is handling your accident. Um, yes, they are, they are handling it, and they are handling it very well. Got you some MRIs, because really taking care of it. I don't know what I'm doing, they do, and that, yeah. that, that's what I need them for. So. Look, and we're glad we can take care of you. We're here to do that. Uh, I just don't want people to think you like somehow lost it over some negligence. Oh, Someone no, no. hit you, it wasn't your fault, and we, we're taking care of that, and we're, you know, we're making sure that that thing goes good. Yeah, trust me. I love that car, with, uh, so I, didn't really, I really didn't want to lose it. So. Right. <laughs> right. I, I did treat it with as much respect as I could. And then, so you got a second car. I got a second car. And you've been working, but you quit your job. Mm hmm And now you're looking for another one. Maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Take a little time off? Taking a break until I get my education, first of all. Okay. Uh, we'll and how's that going? Me. You know, that was a big question for a lot of people, Anthony. Um, a lot of the questions that I'd gotten from people about you was, you know, how is his education going? How is he doing getting an education? How is he doing feeling about you know, just learning, man, because you had started, you know, sort of down the road a little bit, you know, right? You, you were kind of behind the eight ball. And so how's that, how's that process going? I know it took a little bit of time for you to find a place. Why don't you talk about finding a place first? Yeah, well, first of all, I, I've, I've started and stopped my education multiple times because it was hard for me. But as of now, I have a place I'm going to where I actually feel like I am learning stuff and I have proved it because I'm actually done with... Uh, science and social studies so now i just have like three more subjects and then i'm done so you're done with science and social studies in terms of your high school education high school they call it the high set in this state the high set yeah which is a high school equivalency or ged congratulations man that's great i'm glad yeah. to hear you're done with those two that's awesome man that's yeah, awesome so, and so what are the three subjects you have left uh, i think it's like 
reading and language is like two different ones and then math math yeah how's math going well math's the hardest obviously but other other stuff's easy other stuff is math is difficult math's difficult for a lot of people I mean, seriously, man. So don't feel, you ain't got to feel bad about math being a challenge. Math's a challenge to a lot of folks, man. I know, I know. People hate math. You know, Everybody like, hates hate, math. Oh, well, man, well, people hate numbers. Well, you said you liked math, didn't you? I do. I'm a math freak. I love math. But <laughs> I like weirdo. math. I just hate when you get to algebra. I'm like a weirdo nerd, man. I like nerdy shit, you know? <laughs> well, hey, if you're smart, go for it, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so I dig that kind of stuff. But I get it that people don't, man, you know? I mean, my wife is not a huge math fan, so I, I get it 100%. And so one of my kids, too. Most of my kids like math. Math, but one of my kids just can't stand math. I mean, just like I struggles with it, man. You Once know? I got to algebra, I'm like, what am I even looking at? What is this? What, is, what are you trying to say? <laughs> Why can't you just make it simpler? I'd be done with this. <laughs> Why we got to talk about letters, man? I thought this was Bro, numbers math. I ain't ever used that stuff anywhere in my That's life. That's funny, man. That's funny. Well, I'm glad you're doing well, man. I'm really glad you found a place. What what, what place are you at, by the way? It's called the, I can't couldn't spell it if you told me, but it's called Krista McAuliffe Learning Center. It's like a. Krista McAuliffe. Yeah, yeah. I, you don't know who that is, do you? I have no idea. She's an astronaut. She was a school teacher who was uh, who was put on the space shuttle to go out in the space shuttle um, and with all the astronauts and stuff. And she got on the space shuttle on January, no, February the second or January the thirty first of nineteen eighty six, and the space shuttle Challenger blew up with her on it. And she died. She did. Oh, well, yeah. Obviously. So did everyone else. Obviously, she right? died. Yeah. And so um, they must they must have some program in Baton Rouge named after her. Yeah. So the, they, they just named the school after her in her honor. Oh, that's cool. That's really yeah, cool, I guess man. So. so that's who she is. Yeah. That she was a, like a hero, man, because she was, you know, she was like elected. They had some contest or something, if I recall. It's been a long time, 1986. They had some contest or something where she was then selected as the teacher. She was not a real astronaut. She was just a school teacher. Yeah. She was going up with him, man. And that's when the shuttle blew up, you know, uh, oh, the yeah. shuttle Challenger blew up. And then she ended up dying on there, you know, like along with all the astronauts, obviously. But that's cool, man, that they that did that cool. in her honor, man. That's cool. That is really cool, you know. That's good, man. So, so I didn't know that. You know, it's a pretty decent school. I ain't going to lie. You're getting a second shot at life, education. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome, man. That's awesome, man. So, uh, and so, how, what, what kind of time frame do you think it's going to take to get that done? Do you know? Well, I, as of right now, I said I quit my job. So, I'm trying to, I get off in August if I get my education. So, I'm trying to get off the, the first day on the halfway point through my probation, you know. You Your halfway point of probation is in August. Yeah, and you're trying to finish your education before August. That way we can terminate your probation at the halfway point. At, at the same day, if right. possible. <laughs> right. We're, we're going to terminate your probation at the halfway point, and you will be done with this. We'll file an expungement for an expungement of your record, and you will be ready to move on. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's the idea right now. That's was, our plan. Yeah. Yeah, and so you want to get this education done in the next couple of months. Yeah, and it should be done as long as I don't have too much trouble with math. Focus up, right, right. Well, look, I would offer you help, but I'm not the bestest teacher in the whole wide world. <laughs> yeah, is it? Lean on those people over there because, you know, teachers are good, man. Like, pe- educators are good at educating, right? Yeah. Uh, for sure. And, of course, you, you can call me, but I'm, I'm, again, I don't know how much of a teacher I am. I'm not patient enough to teach uh, stuff like math. I understand. I'm barely patient enough to learn it myself, but I do, I do, um, <laughs> I do try, and I do learn it eventually. It just takes a long-ass time. Yeah, no, I get it, man. I get it. I tend to look at math. I used to, and the reason I know this is I try to teach my kids math, and I'd be like, well, look at it. It doesn't make sense to you? Because <laughs> like, it just makes sense to me. Yeah, like, it's I, just numbers and lines and squiggles, man. That's all it is. I'm like, you're That's trying awesome, to teach man. me another language. I, I could learn Spanish before I can learn this thing. Learn the numbers and shit, right? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so what do you plan on doing do you have any idea what you're going to do after, like, let's, after we get through with the probation, after you're sort of free to move about the country as you see fit? Are you guys planning on leaving? Are y'all staying in Louisiana? What you doing? Well, as of now, I'm staying in Louisiana. As for a job and stuff, I have no idea because my last job made me pretty upset. So, you know, if I get my GED and I get a good job offer, then yeah, but we'll see. Yeah, yeah. And and I know you were you were at a convenience store. Is that where you were? Oh, I've worked all type of jobs. But okay. no, as of recent, I was working at a Ford dealership. All right. And what were you doing over there? I'm a detailer. I was a detailer. So washing cars and such. I wash the cars. I clean the cars. I clean all types of stuff. Cool, man. Cool. Yeah, I mean, look, as you as you get your education and you get more comfortable being around the public and you get more comfortable social in the social environment, maybe there's some other things you can do, you know? Yeah, maybe. Maybe there's some other things you can, you can uh, pick up. 
Yeah, but as of now, I'll probably have to wait until I get my education to be interested in further employment. Yeah, and there's no doubt, man. Look, education is a great thing, right? And not only do we learn, not only is it sort of for our own good, just kind of general good, but it's also focused on what you want to do, man. You know, if you want to have a specific job, sometimes it takes specific training, right? Yeah. And or getting involved in an environment or in a job where you can train on the job, right? OTJ, right, on the job training where you can get in there and maybe learn a skill at a low level and then move up in the job as you keep it right. Mm -hmm. And there are some places where there are some places where you can get jobs where you can go and, and doggone be excited about going to work every day. Right. And that's hard to believe sometimes, but it really is, man. You can find a place that you're like, you know what? This ain't the perfect job. This ain't the 100 out of 100 job. But it's a 90 out of 100, and I'm digging it, and, and I'm going to see how it I works. Say, I say my job, my last job was almost a 90 out of 100. They just ain't pay me nothing. Oh, yeah. The pay was low. Terrible. You I, enjoyed doing the job. You I, enjoyed the people there, just, too? Yeah, it just wasn't worth it. It wasn't yeah. worth it. You know, if, if it ain't worth it financially, then it ain't worth it physically, and it damn sure ain't worth it mentally. That's right. That's right. Then you just you feel like you're wasting your time. Well, I, I do, more money I do feel like I learned some stuff, but even then, I still don't feel like it was worth it. Yeah, yeah. How were the people there? How were the people working? Oh, there? they were mostly great. I liked all of them, to be honest. How you been doing getting along with folks, man? You been uh, connecting with people and stuff? Yeah, I, I be chilling. You know, I don't talk a lot, so people got to talk to me, but I be chilling. Yeah, it's funny, man. Ryan and I were talking, uh, Ryan, my partner, and I were talking about yesterday. He's been going to court with you a lot. I've been super busy myself doing, you know, trials yeah, and stuff. Yeah, I saw, I saw you on Instagram. I'm like, man, that man, man, that man busy. Because I know we were supposed to Ben do this, but, like, I was busy. I was like, man, that he got other stuff going on. We talked about this, like, what, a month ago <laughs> doing this thing? I know, yeah. man. I'm so, I've been so busy. I tried two jury trials since I talked to you the first time about this. So oh. we've just been super busy. But Ryan's been going to court with you. And what he told me the other day was, like, man, Anthony's personality is completely different now. He smiles. He talks. So what you think is quiet, we recognize is not. Right. You know what I mean? Like, Anthony, when we met you, man, you're so far away from that. And you, even though you're still quiet, I mean, people are quiet. Some people just don't like yeah. talking a lot. Ain't no big deal. But, for, man, where you are now from where you were, it's a whole different ball game, man. Do you feel that, yeah, like, in your I, everyday life? I agree. I definitely changed a lot in the past half decade. Yeah. Do you feel that in your everyday life? Do you feel it, that the difference in when we first met and today? Like, how, do you, how personally how you are? Do you feel that in your body? Yeah, yeah, you know, I, no, it's not like the um, the emotions uh, like changed or anything. It's just like I just you just get better at handling them and stuff. You know, it's just life just gets easier as you age, if you surround yourself with the right environment and people. And I think with the right people, yeah, that's great, man. And are you and Kayla still together? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's awesome, man. That's awesome. How y'all doing? We're doing good. We're still in the same same apartment up in Point Capi Parish. I don't be in BR too much right now, cause, just because. Since I, people have been driving crazy around here, even like I don't even like bringing my new car down here. Yeah, just, and not only that, but people are crazy in batteries. Man, there's a lot of shooting. Oh, I know. There. I don't even want to go out at night, man. It gets dark at night. I just sit in my house. I chill in my house, man. I don't do nothing. I don't even want to leave the house. People are so crazy, man. Uh, it's the trenches for real out here. Yeah, man. I don't, I don't mess around. I don't mess around at nighttime anymore, man. That's a young man's game. That ain't my game. I'm chilling at the house. <clears throat> so I get it, man. And Point Capi is about how long? How far from batteries? About an hour. That's kind of the country, huh, man? It's a little country, but you know, people that up there, they're a lot more, they're a lot different. They're a lot, they're a lot quieter. They they talk a lot more about each other. They, 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 they a lot different. Yeah, they're nice up there. They're, sweet they're nice. They just, they just like to talk a lot. Yeah, they ain't got nothing else to do. No, they sit around it's talking one about of those <laughs> old towns. You know, everybody knows everybody. Everybody likes to talk about everybody. Sure, sure. Do you get recognized up there as being? Oh yeah, Anthony Temple. I mean, oh yeah, the whole town probably knows me. No kidding. Mm -hmm. And knows you from the documentary. I would say if I walk into a supermarket, like maybe I mean, like let's say I walk into like the general store around there. I'm, I'm I might have like at least one or two people recognize me. They might not say nothing, but they might they but, might know. But me. you see them looking at you like. Oh, I think I know that dude. I know. I, sometimes I see people turn their heads and look at me. I know. I know. I know you know. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think that's, is that, does that make you feel good? Does it make you feel bad? Are you kind of neutral about it? How do you feel about that? It doesn't bother me. I've, I've had people come up to me and tell, tell me they recognize me and they try to give me hugs and stuff. So I don't really care. I don't really care. 
That's sweet. Just no. don't pull up and shoot me, please. please. No, no, no shooting. <laughs> no shooting. Please. I'm trying to live out here. Don't try to hurt me, man. <laughs> yeah. Come in funny. peace, for real. That's come in peace. That's hilarious, man. I love it. I love it. <clears throat> so that's interesting. So, uh, you know, it, it, that's a long way to go from where you were when you were working at Clegg's, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You remember working at Clegg's? Remember how that was like? Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't mentioned that place in a minute, but yeah, <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> I just find it, I don't know, man, I find it, uh, I find it remarkable, the resilience, you know, the way that people are, you know, the way that humans are generally, but the way that you are specifically, that you came out of that situation you were in, and you're a pretty normal cat. Well, for the most part, yeah. I mean, you can't expect everybody to be completely sane when you have went through that stuff, but yeah, I would say I'm mostly normal, and I chill, I don't, I don't bother nobody, so. Yeah. But yeah, you can really, you can really overcome anything, you just. You know, just lock in and figure it out, bro. Yeah, and, what, and when you when you say lock in, what does that look like for you, man? What does it look like for you to have like owned your life like this? Focus. Get rid of the negativity. Get rid of the negative people. You you got to figure out something you enjoy doing. Sometimes the stuff you enjoy doing as a younger person doesn't work no more, and you got to find new things. And give yourself a break if you want to do things that you enjoy. Yeah, don't be afraid to quit your job. Don't don't for, don't be afraid to take the risk. To make a better life for yourself. Yeah, that's right. It's better to go broke, keep trying, than to maintain and do nothing. Stay miserable. Yeah, you got that right, my man. You got that right. It's interesting because for me, um, just looking at you, because I feel like you're a normal cat, right? When we talk now, you're just a normal dude, right? Like you said, like one of my son's friends or something. You're just like a normal dude, you know, it's off the street, you know? I wouldn't if I didn't know about you. I would never think that you'd been through something like you'd been through, right? Like, like I wouldn't look at you that, in other words, you don't wear it on your sleeve. Like, no, right? no. A lot of people tell me I look very innocent. They don't, they hear about me. They don't think I'm like that. You know, they, they think I'm just the average person. And you are, right? Even with that experience, yeah. it doesn't have to define you, right? Right. I, I mean, I don't got to prove it because people tell me and look at me and say, I just look like a normal person. I don't got to, you know. You can you can you can shake back from anything, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's one of those. It's funny that you talked earlier. You were talking about uh, gaming. You still game? I do. I just don't do it as much because they don't know how to make no good games no more. <laughs> you got that right, man. I'm a gamer too. You know I am. I told you that before. That's one of those things I talk to people about all the time. They're like, "Oh man, you're playing video games. You're wasting time." I'm like, you know how much stuff you do wasting time, man? That I don't do. You know how much I learned on video games. Man, I don't learn so much stuff from video games. I dig it, man. Look, I, I still got a group of friends I've been playing with for almost 20 years now. Same group of friends. We played all kind of games together, man. I love it. They're, from, they're great people, man. I see them on the internet. We talk. We've met in person. The guys came down and went to LSU football game with me last year. I mean, I, I, we're friends. We're like see, legit uh, friends, man. We hang out together. We a talk. Lot of, a lot of people think that, you know, you meet somebody online, you don't, you're not going to be friends in person ever. It's like, you know, have you seen... The future or the place we're living in, like, it ain't nothing to hop on a plane. It ain't nothing to hop in a Skype call. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't. Yeah, and in my opinion, it's no different than playing golf, fishing, mm -hmm. hunting, going drinking with your friends. In fact, in fact, it's healthier than some, <laughs> than some of that drinking nonsense, right? I, know, I mean, it's, I know. right? And it costs, I don't know, the game I used to play used to cost me 15 bucks a month. So I was like, man, I'm getting my money's worth because <laughs> yeah, I play yeah, this doggone yeah. game all the time. How much are you going to spend on a bottle of liquor? Like 15, 20 bucks if you're getting the cheap shit? Right. Instant. So you're instantly spending more money than I am on a video game. And I'm just chilling and hanging out, man. Not causing no harm. Not doing anything bad to nobody. Yeah. Yeah, I dig it, man. I dig it. And that's the kind of thing I was talking about earlier about. Sometimes you just got to do what entertains you, man. You got to do what you enjoy in life and don't worry about it. Like, I'm just going to chill and do what I like, you know? Yeah, for sure. That's, that's how good. I feel. And that's why, that's why I just I don't take... I don't take none of that bullshit. I just, I just enjoy my life. Ain't nothing worth it, you know. That's it's not right. gonna disturb my peace. That's right. Yeah, and and own the peace. You know, do what you have to do to get it, huh? Where do you think, Anthony? Kind of shifting gears. Where, where do you think your future lies, man? If you have, if you given any thought to, you know, what 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 five years from now looks like, what ten years from now looks like for Anthony? Mm, I usually don't like to plan too much in the head because stuff changes all the time, but. Obviously, in the future, I'd, I'd like to be in a better place. Probably probably in the future, a good goal would be in the next five years to own some land and build a house on it. Get my, bi get my bills down. I don't want to have to worry about too many bills. If I don't have to worry about too many bills, I can, I can, I can stack up my money all the way. Right. All the way. Crazy amounts. Right. 
cut down expenses, increase savings. Increase savings and income. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Do you have any idea what you want to do uh, in terms of work? Have you, have you decided, have you thought about that, about a, like a career or something to do after you finish a high school education? I haven't thought about that because I can do anything. I've done everything. I can do anything. I've, I've, I can plant stuff. I can lawn care. It, it, just name it. I've probably done it. I ain't going to even, it'd be, I'd be sitting here for 20 minutes listing off things I can do. <laughs> so you can, so you've done a lot of stuff. Yeah. So you feel like there's a lot of options for you out there. There's too many options to lock in on. So whatever, whenever I get my education, I'll be able to look and see what kind of, you know, I'll have a lot more like things to look at and then I'll narrow it down based on what I want out of it. You know what I'm saying? So the world's kind of big right now, but maybe you'll hone that in as you, as you start to think about it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great idea, man. That's a great idea. Especially if you get really good at something. You know, it's funny because people talk about like, oh, I want to be this or I want to be that. I want to be that. I and I love it, man. You're looking at just life stuff, man. I don't know. Maybe I'll cut lawns for a living and open up a lawn cutting company and make a ton of money. I mean, who, you know, who yeah, knows? Yeah, I, I know people that do that. I know people that do all types of stuff like and that. And they make all kind of money doing that stuff. Yeah, they man. got more money than me. Yeah, they, they're rolling. <laughs> They're doing great, you know? And so it, you don't have to, it don't have to be special. It don't have to be algebra, man. You ain't got to go out and make money, make doing algebra. <laughs> you can go out and kill it doing other stuff, man. As long as you're willing to put in the time, the effort, the energy, grow your business, take care of folks, you know? Yeah, because, you know, I've had, I've had different options of what I thought a career would be, but they ain't just ain't work out in my opinion. And I just feel like I'll just wait a little bit longer, get, get a little bit more educated, and I'll figure it out then. Yeah, that's good. Because I'm good for now. I don't I don't need to make money right now. You all right? I'm fine. That's good, man. That's good, man. I'm glad to hear that. How uh how's it been going? Have you contacted any family? Have you talked to anybody that prior to these events, the people that we all saw on the Netflix documentary, have you had any communication with anybody since? I talk to Elena still sometimes, you know, Elena Fennel. Yeah, yeah. Oh, who's over at Clegg's. Yeah, yeah. She's yeah. But other than that, you know, I I don't think so. I think that's you. Yeah. I think that's it, though. That's it. You haven't talked to your mom, Teresa? I don't talk to anybody from Texas. Yeah, and your sister, neither one? Nobody from Texas. Okay. If they don't live in my state, I don't talk to them. All right. You talk to your stepbrother at all? No. No? Just kind of chilling, nobody else? Mm -hmm. yeah. Kind of in that same space with that about talking to them? How do you feel about that? I don't know. I don't really know. I feel like people are too busy anyway. I don't really, they don't really got the time for me anyway. I'm, I don't got the time for that, for trying to make something happen that I'm not sure if it's going to work out. Yeah. That makes sense. That makes sense. Cause who knows what it would be anyway. Right. Mm hmm. Yeah. That's chill. I appreciate that. <clears throat> you know, one of the things uh, people ask me all the time is, um, is Anthony getting counseling? Uh, have you been, you've been doing regular counseling, right? You mean like a psychiatrist or something? That's right. Oh yeah, I do. I still go sometimes, but you know, obviously if you're talking about traditional therapy, I don't believe in it. I tried it. I think it's BS. Now, maybe I just ain't had the right person, but hey, whatever. Yeah, yeah. It didn't work for you. No. Whomever you had doing whatever they were doing didn't work for you. Because, look, I'm going to put it this way. If I'm going to come up in here and I'm going to give you $100 and you're going to tell me how I should think, you better be God himself because I don't, I don't, like, like I don't, I don't need to hear what you think I should be doing. I know what I need to be doing. Right. You felt confident in what you need to be doing. And I feel like therapy is for people that don't have confidence in themselves unless they really do have a therapist that understands understands the person, I guess. I don't know. Right. If therapy was more like, Anthony, tell me what you're feeling and guiding you in your thoughts and ideas as opposed to imposing things onto you, that might be different. I mean, look, I've been in therapy. I've been in successful therapy before. But that therapy looks like, man, this is what's going on with me, and this is what I think. And they're like, well, what about maybe that? Or what do you think about this? Mm -hmm. It's really just about options, right? Like a therapist, like a really good therapist, and I've got yeah. some really good therapists, are like, well, you think this might work, or that might work maybe? Or well, you want to try yeah. one of those instead? Like it's not telling you what to do. It's hey, those are great ideas that you have, or that's decent thinking, but what about doing this instead maybe for a week and see if that works? Or doing this yeah. over here for a week or something. What do you think about that? And letting you make the decision. I can see that. I think I also need, I need someone a little bit more hard-headed like me because I really don't, I don't take advice easily. So you really got to, you really got to hammer it into me, I feel like. 
<laughs> or do what I just said instead of hammering it, right? You go the other direction. Right. Instead of hammering, you got instead of imposing it onto you. Instead of like forcing you, you got to like telling you to come up with it yourself. Somewhat gently guide them in the direction to where I feel like it was my idea. That's right. Like you came because if you it. make me feel like it was my idea all along, I won't question what you're saying. Right. And you own it too, right? If in other words, if you and I we talk about a I don't know, we talk about something about a job and I tell you, you know, about trying to get a job, about trying to and we and we talk about it and I just offer you ideas. Oh man, what about this? What do you think about that? What do you think about this? What do you think about that? And during that conversation you come up with a solution. Well then it's your solution. I'm just helping you find it, right? Yeah, you're just getting the like ball I'm helping rolling. you uncover it, right? All right. And that to me is good therapy, right? If that's not the therapy you had, then it wasn't probably great therapy. No, for I don't feel like that was the therapy I had. I could be wrong. Maybe I just was in a worse place. But look, if you t like, they just tried to oh, oh, just meditate and think and be like, man, I know how to meditate, bro. I know how, I, I done did a, I done did three day fast. And it ain't nothing, right? That, that, that ain't the problem, right? That's not gonna assist me, right? That's interesting. Where do you see, you know, if I were to ask you, Anthony, if I were to say, here's, here's an interesting question. If I were to say, Anthony, what's the one thing you have to work on in your life? What's your challenge? What's your big challenge right now? What do you think that is? In my life or yeah. my mental? Either one. Whichever one you want to talk about. Hey, it might not even be mental. It might just be behavioral. Like I've been doing this too much or that too much or this too little. I mean, what's that one big challenge that comes to mind when I ask you what you need to do? To, what do you need to handle? Mm, I don't, I'm not going to say I need to handle anything, but I am going to say I get tired of people really easily and I cut them off real fast when I, when they start getting on that bullshit. Yeah. Like I don't have the patience for people that that aren't on the same level as me, I guess. So, like maturity, I guess. So patience and tolerance. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a challenge for you. Yeah. And, and, and what, what do you think when you are talking to someone and they get on that bullshit? What goes on in your head when you're like, man, I got to cut this MF off? What, what's going on in your brain? They, do, they, start saying, they start saying some stupid stuff like, I don't know, like, I'm just, let me think of an example. Kind of kind of hit a wall, but hold up. I don't know. I just feel like. You know, I'm pretty. I th I would say this. I'm pretty easy going. I don't. I don't. Sh I don't shake the table too much. You know. I, so, when people come around me and they start talking bad about other people I know behind their back, I don't like that. I don't. I really don't like when people talk behind their back about people. That's right. You know, that's one of the. That I'll say that's one of the main things. I really don't like like that type of behavior. No, that's spot on, and ain't, ain't good for nobody. Right. I don't feel like it is. And so. It's funny that you see it's funny because the first thing you said was about how sometimes people will talk to you and you're not you're not about the bullshit they talk, you know? Like you feel like they're not on your level. What if when you saw that, instead of saying this person's not on my level, you said, Perhaps I can teach this person something. Perhaps I can guide this person in some way. Perhaps I can be the wise one in this situation. Perhaps instead of giving up on this person, I can give them some advice or I can model for them what it looks like to not shit talk someone. You know what I mean? Cause look, I'm a very educated, very smart, very experienced, you know, person. Yeah. So I come in contact with a lot of folks in my life who may not have some of those features of their life. Right. Right. And so it would be super easy for me to dismiss them as, not smart enough, not educated enough, not experienced enough. Yeah, it'd be easier to draw that conclusion. And just boogie, right? Way. Yeah, just boogie, right? Well, but instead, man, I really try to come into contact with those people and lift them up. That's a different point of view. Yeah, well, you know, I would say this. You know, it depends. Obviously, if you're just some random person on the street, mm -hmm. then whatever. But That's right. if you have some type of connection with me or some people I know, I'm going to do my best to be cool with you. But it's not going to be easy. That's right. It's a challenge. That's right. And it's, you know, for me, for me, that lifting up thing, you know, trying to lift people, I'm trying to lift folks up, you know, every time I come in contact with folks, people I care about, man, not people on the street, but people I care about. Every time I come into contact with them, can I lift them? Can I make them better? You know, can I make them happier? Can I make their life better? Yeah. Can I make their experience better? Can I make their understanding better? You know, and, and if I can do that and I can walk away from that interaction and I can know 
and I made a difference today, you know? Like I helped somebody out today, you know? Yeah. That's a different point of view to come about, right? I know the first point of view you talked about, that point of view about I get frustrated with people, I want to cut them off. That's easy to do, and look, sometimes it's real appropriate to do that shit, right? Sometimes you just got to cut people off and, and boogie, man, because yeah. some people ain't worth the time. Right. But some people are. And when they are, make an effort to do the other thing, man, to go the other direction, you know what I mean? Think about that shit sometimes. It'd be like, I think I'll do what Jared said, man. I'll try to try to make a difference. <laughs> I think I think you <laughs> try make, to chill and like fix, you know help people out. You know? I think you make a good point, but yeah, you you did ask you know what what I have trouble with, and that's what I that's why I have trouble with. Maybe I cut people off too fast. Maybe I give up on people too easily. I don't know, something like that. Yeah, that's good, man. And look, knowing that, being honest with yourself about that is awesome, right? Because it's hard, man. It's hard to look. It's hard to look into the camera and be like. Man, I ain't good at this, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's a tough thing to do, right? But I appreciate you doing that. I mean, I appreciate you being honest enough to tell people like this is what's kind of tough for me right now, you know. Right. I appreciate that. Is there anything else that you uh, that you can think of that you want to want to talk about, man? I can't think of any more problems. We can move <laughs> on to the next topic, I guess. If you if you got an idea, I do. I do. Here's my next question: What brings you the most joy right now? What's the opposite end of the spectrum, man? What is it that you just love to do, man? That you're just digging these days? Well, like I said, I quit. I like I like not I like being unemployed. <laughs> I like having my freedom. That was hilarious. And I like to go outside and do nothing. And I like I like to go outside, and I don't have to worry about my phone. I don't gotta worry about any motherfuckers around me. I just get in my car, and I go do what I want to do. Just go chill, and be silent and peaceful. Yeah. Yeah. Peace is a peacefulness is awesome, man. <laughs> That's the doggone truth, man. Because I've been. Ever since I got out of jail, I've been working a job nonstop, man. That, that, that's hard, especially with these shitty ass jobs. Yeah, yeah, it's not easy, for sure, for sure, man. <clears throat> and so that kind of peacefulness is where you find the most joy. Yeah. Do you have any kind of uh, spiritual pursuits in your life, man? Is that something that you've considered, or? God's a weird topic for me, but I do believe it's a weird topic for everyone. Let's be clear. I'm not a Muslim. I'm not a Christian. I do believe in a God. I'm not exactly sure what it is or looks like. That's about most of us. <laughs> I think we all kind of the same way on that. I don't believe in a hell, but I do believe in a in between and a heaven, maybe, or something like that. Yeah. As for hell, I don't know. If hell is anywhere, it's probably this planet. Probably right here where we are, right? Yeah. Or it maybe be. purgatory. Who knows? It can be for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think spiritual pursuits are not without uh, without reward. You know, I'm I'm not a I'm not a huge fan of any one spiritual pursuit for sure. I don't I don't ascribe to your book or my book or that book or this book. Yeah, I don't believe. In I think there's words. some beautiful teachings in all of them. Because on some real stuff, I'd write my own religious book if I was really. Really, like if I was really on on that spiritual stuff, I'd write my own book. Yeah, drawing from all the sources, the best, best, because different religions do th different things better. I agree. In my opinion, hundred so percent. I would just pick out what I think the best parts of it from over here, over here, through my mind, and then I figure it out. Yeah. yeah. So that's how I think about religion. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't go to churches or nothing. But how do you think? Do you think that religion and spirituality are the same thing? Religion is Some sort of religions, a, religion yes. is a construct of man. Spirituality is a co is a connection well, with if, something greater than yourself. No, that, no, fuck whatever I was about to say. If you say religion really is a construct of man, I don't believe God comes from man. I don't believe God comes from earth. But that's spirituality. That's what I was saying. Spirituality is a connection to something bigger than yourself. So um, I would say I'm more spiritual than religious. Right. You believe, but you don't ascribe to bullshit. Ascribe to the nonsense and the not and the, and the dogma. No, what they I call think, dogma, right? I think it makes me more godly to be spiritual than religious, personally. That's awesome. Or God like not not like I'm a god like on some narcissist stuff, but like, but like, I can be the better version of myself if I believe in my beliefs, right? And live consistent with what you believe to be the best course of action, right? Yeah. Take care of yourself. Take care of folks. Be compassionate. Be loving. Be empathetic. Right. Yeah. Amen. Man. <clears throat> so I guess um, I guess the last I got one other one last question for you, man. Um, and, and it's and it's really about 
gratitude, right? Which I think is also spiritual, by the way. Like, what did, well, how did it make you feel that all these people were so doggone sweet to you, man, reached out to you during this time after the documentary for our, our first talk, our first uh, conversation together? I mean, w- what, has that, what has that done in your heart in terms of feeling the love from so many people from all over the world? Well, it's de- it's definitely it's definitely hard to talk about because I would say in general my emotions are pretty I'm pretty numb to my emotions, but I do I do I do really I do really appreciate what y'all have done for me, and I do feel I do feel the love, but you know y'all just gotta understand that it's hard for me to feel like normal like everybody does like my emotions are so I don't know what the word is hardened inaccessible. I felt the love too, man, and, I, and I'm kind of the opposite end of the spectrum emotionally. My emotions are on my sleeve, man. I'm just one of those people that, like, I don't care. I feel like crying, I'm going to cry. I feel like laughing, I'm going to laugh. Well, <laughs> I feel you know, like getting mad, I'm going to get mad and tell you I'm mad about it. I mean, I just, hey, that's who I am, man. You can do what you want. You're, I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, you're, you know, you're a man at the end of the day, so you don't care. That's right. We're just doing what we want to do, right? And, 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 I, and I sort of live that way, but I get it the other direction. I really do. I, ain't, I am not telling you. I'm not telling you I'm right and you're wrong. I'm just telling right. you we're different. It's just different. Yeah, we're just different. You know, we're There's just not wrong with being different. That's right. You supposed right. you everybody's supposed to be different, or otherwise we wouldn't get along. That's right. And I, and I feel you, man. I feel you, and I feel the. Uh, I felt the love of all these people. It's so sweet, man. People are supportive of me, of you, of us, of the documentary, of Atlanta, of everybody, man. It was just the outpouring was incredible, and it's uh, it yeah. still touches me every day to think about it, man. I want everybody involved in everything around me to be successful. I don't want myself to just be successful. I'm glad that y'all really care about everybody in the picture. And I'm still in touch with a lot of people. Like, I still talk to Dr. Lawing. I talk to her, I don't know, every couple of months. She still does work for me. We still do other work in other cases together. Uh, I talk to um, uh, the producers, Kath- uh, Catherine, one of the producers. I visited her in New York. Uh, really? I still talk to Connor, <laughs> one of the other producers. I mean, I, I talk to some of the people still. We still have relationships. We still share stories with each other, talk to each other. Um, you know, it's it's really great, man. I, you know, it's one of those things that 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 uh, that experience will never leave me. You know. Yeah, it was. It's definitely a like a once in a lifetime experience, and I'm glad I got to experience because you know, I were, I could I could, I should have you know I could have died a long time ago, but I didn't. And now I feel like I made history. So, you know, if I die tomorrow, it's okay. Yeah, that's right, man. I think we, uh, I think we affected a lot of people in the world, man. And I hope we gave some people hope. I really do. I feel like we gave some people hope, man. Um, I feel like we gave some people who maybe in, I can't tell you how, what the outpouring of people I've had who said that they were in a similar position as yours or their son was in or their daughter was in a similar position as you. And just, just the outpouring of well wishes and how they get, they'll, they'll, they'll send me texts about how they got out of it or about how they sustained it until they were adults and moved out and, and about how sympathetic they are uh, for what you had to do. Um, and it's been so touching, man, everybody. You know, like one, sometimes people will share just the most personal stuff with me, man, and I'll be like, God, thank you. Thank you for just opening your heart yeah, and sharing that with me, man. Like People be telling me stuff I never tell nobody. I'm like, why are you telling me this? <laughs> and it's just, and it's just sweet. Well, I appreciate just, it a lot. I just like, wow. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> sometimes it's heavy too, man. Sometimes it's really heavy, you know. I've had people from all types of different countries, people that don't even speak English, talking about how they had some similar problems and stuff. But they don't have the resources we do in America, so they have a lot harder time dealing with it. Yeah, yeah. And and, and sometimes, you know, what's interesting about people in your position or people in similar positions, sometimes they just want to be heard. They yeah, just want true. to know somebody, somebody knows they're there, right? Somebody knows they exist. Somebody acknowledges that they're, that they're out there, you know? And so a lot of times when people send me that stuff, that's what I do. I'm like, hey, thank you. Thank you for telling me that. Thank you for sharing your story with me. Thank you for trusting me with your story, you know? I really appreciate it. I see you, you know? I see you out there, and I hope that everything goes well for you, you know? Uh, I try to connect with them in some way, you know? Just, yeah, just yeah. to let them know, you know? Like, I'm with you. I, I can't. I can't do nothing. Like I can't. I can't. I can't help. I don't know how to help, but I can. Yeah. But I can tell you that I'm here. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I can tell you that I see you there. That's all you can do for some people, unless they come to you in person, though. You know. You know when. It's a lot easier to help someone when you see them in person than a text message over the internet. You know. Yeah, that's right. That's right. But it still doesn't. You know, it still mean it doesn't take away the 
the um, importance of the words they're saying. Right. That's right. It's still very sweet. It's still very kind. And I still have a lot of sympathy for people in this position and similar position to yours for sure, man. Um, well, look, man, I think that's, uh, I think that's all I had. You have anything else that you were thinking about talking about while we were here? No, I can't. I don't really, I don't really plan nothing or even think about it. I just get it, get here and whatever. So <laughs> I didn't, I didn't even know. I didn't even know we we're doing this live. You say we we're doing it live. I'm like, all right, let's do it. <laughs> let's go live. Who cares? Yeah. Why not, man? Yeah, that's fun. And then what we'll do is, uh, it's been live today on Facebook. Um, what we'll do is we'll actually put the recording up on YouTube and a couple of other places. I have a bunch of different, you know, you know, I have a bunch of different stuff on social yeah, media. Yeah. I'll put it all up on all of my sites and we'll see, you know, kind of put it out there for people to take a look at. Um, I appreciate you being here, man. I appreciate you taking some time and, sp and spending that time with me and, and listening to my sometimes easy and sometimes difficult questions, man. I appreciate you sharing that. I know the people appreciate you sharing it with them too, man. Sharing some of your life, some of your time. Um, again, thank you for being here for us, man. Thank you for having me. It's been fun. All right, man. Take care. That's it, y'all. Thank you very much for coming. I really appreciate it. Really appreciate everybody uh, tuning in today on the live. If you're here, thank you. Um, and if you haven't been here on the live and you want to watch this, we're going to put this up on YouTube, uh, on my YouTube channel. So uh, I think that's it. Have a good afternoon. Thank you. All right. Thank you.